Hi, welcome to the uh, final set of lectures uh, for the Collingwood High School Advanced Topics in Mathematics for the spring of 2020. So I'm, I'm labeled this lecture here, Finding Prime Numbers, Part 1. I don't know how many parts this is actually going to be, uh, probably uh, at least two, uh, maybe three or four uh, lectures. I want to keep them to be approximately a half an hour. So this is our final topic uh, in regards to the RSA encryption algorithm and we have the problem before us uh, which we have not discussed at all and that is how to find prime numbers. Okay, We have no uh, mechanism for doing this at this point that is at anywhere near efficient. So the problem is it's not just how to find, uh, well how to determine if a number is prime but also how to find large uh, prime numbers. So that is our, our our final topic for this semester and obviously we need this for RSA because if you don't have large prime numbers you can't run RSA encryption. So that is our problem here and so this part of one of the lecture I'm going to introduce the problem and then we're going to see that uh, we need uh, a little bit more number theory than we currently have and in particular that's going to be the idea of a quadratic residue and quadratic reciprocity. So there'll be one uh, lecture here, part one, introducing the problem, setting ourselves up for what we're going to try to do. Then there's going to be one or two lectures on quadratic residues and quadratic reciprocity. And then we will cover the solovey strassen algorithm, which uses uh, quadratic, quadratic, the ideas of quadratic reciprocity in order to uh, quickly determine if a number is prime. And I just want to say right at the outset, the algorithm we're going to use is uh, not 100% uh, uh, um, accurate. It is always going to have a certain error, but it is fast. So that's the idea. What we're going to do is run this thing and we are going to get an answer at the end. Yes, we pretty much think this number is prime. Uh, there is a small possibility of error which we can bound, uh, but uh, we are not We are not at the end of this going to be 100% sure that the number that we've identified as prime is actually prime. Okay, so the problem is find large random primes. That is our problem at this point. Find large random primes. So after after this part and then the second part um, introducing the number theory, then probably a third lecture to show how, maybe in a fourth lecture to show how that number theory is used to uh, generate a primality testing algorithm. Okay, so here's the problem. Find large random primes. Okay, so uh, basically the idea is uh, uh, that we're, what we're going to see anyways is to, we're going to basically um, generate a large number, generate a large number, and then we are going to test the number. This is actually, I shouldn't just say, it, it's random. So let us just uh, say we wanted a, a 100 digit a long prime number, we would just randomly select an odd 100 di digit number and then we would test to see whether it was prime. Test the number uh, to see if it's prime. Okay, and if we find out no, it isn't prime, then we toss it out and we uh, d uh, uh, get another one. Okay, and we keep going until we uh, randomly select one and then we and then we we te finish testing and it turns out that we're very confident that it's prime, then, we, we, then we, have, we declare that we have found one. Okay, so this is not going to be a deterministic algorithm, it's going to be a uh, Monte Carlo algorithm and I am going to explain these uh, terms to you. Be just before we really, and this is a bit of an aside I admit, but before we uh, proceed with the way we're going to do it, I just want to point out that there actually is an algorithm which was uh, discovered in 2002 and it is called the AKS uh, algorithm and that is after the last names of the people who discovered this and this is uh, the, these are their names here and okay. Agrawal, Kyle and uh, Saxena, sorry I got this it's an X there, Saxena. Okay, so this was done uh, in India at the uh, Indian Institute of Technology in Kanpur. Okay, so this actually is a uh, polynomial time. 
Okay, so the the problem of determining if a number is is uh, prime or not is is a is a polynomial time uh, problem. So it can be done in polynomial time. Uh, it's a deterministic algorithm. Okay, which this basically means that you know, given the, given a particular input, it always produces the same output, and that it produces the it produces the uh, uh, correct answer. It is, however, not used in practice uh, be, because it's it's much more it's much slower. Even though it's in polynomial time, it is still uh, much slower than some of the um, uh, randomized polynomial time Monte Carlo algorithms. Okay, so this is not used in practice. It is, however, a major milestone in computer science, so it's not used in practice uh, because, of that, because of speed. Okay, so that's a bit of an aside. It, it, it's a, I want you to sort of pay attention to the dates here. I mean, we're getting uh, you know, very close to the current time. So there's much research being done in, in these areas and uh, breakthroughs are being made uh, on, on a regular basis. Okay, so it, for, for, for us, at least at the level that um, uh, we're, we're going to be able to understand here, uh, we're, I'm saying that in practice for finding large prime numbers, uh, we're going to be using a randomized polynomial time Monte Carlo algorithm. And I'm gonna explain what that means. So in practice, uh, we are going to be uh, it's we're going to be using a randomized polynomial time. Okay, you were thinking when I'm saying this, think back to the previous lecture we we talked about the computational complexity uh, problem with it, like for example with the uh, square and multiply algorithm. So this is the same idea. We need to we need we need the algorithm to scale up within reason as the numbers get uh, bigger. Otherwise, we, we, can, we can't get any results in any reasonable amount of time. Okay, so in practice, we're using this uh, randomized uh, polynomial time uh, Monte Carlo. I'm going to explain this in a second. Monte Carlo um, um, algorithm. It will carry a small possibility of error. There are sort of a couple that come to mind when you talk about these uh, types of uh, algorithms, and the first one is the one we are going to see. That is the Solovey-Strassen algorithm. Uh, another uh, an, another well-known uh, algorithm is the Miller-Rabin algorithm. This one is actually uh, faster and uh, uh, but unfortunately for us, I guess maybe it's uh, conceptually more difficult to understand how it works. So um, it's conceptually more difficult. So we are going to expend our efforts on understanding the solovey strassen algorithm <clears throat> uh, so we can get a sense of how these things work. It, it may not be the case, however, though, that is what is used either in practice. Okay, so, but uh, this is, this I think is a good entry point into understanding how you would even go about finding a prime number in any sort of reasonable amount of time. Okay, so these uh, algorithms are fast. Okay, let me just uh, indicate uh, how fast, okay? These are fast. Okay, an integer n. It's just a, it's really remarkable. An integer n can be tested in log to the base two n. I'll just put it like that. Okay, it can be tested in time that is uh, of of order log to the base two of n. So if I pick some uh, large number, well, okay, let me just let me just uh, uh, try to get the the basic idea out. So we're going to choose an n. We're going to choose an n, and then we are going to uh, apply an algorithm that's going to tell us within log to the base two of n. Um, if it's prime or not. If, if we find out it's not prime, then we're going to pick another one and try again. So the first thing we need to ask at this point is we can test a single integer in this, this amount of time, log to the base 2 of n. So how many do we need to test until we're going to be able to find one? Like, So how many prime numbers actually are there? Because if we want to 
uh, randomly pick an N and then we test it and it's, it, it, we fail. And then we randomly pick another one and we test it and we fail. How many do we actually have to suspect that, how many numbers do we actually have to test before we uh, have good probability of actually hitting on one of the prime numbers. So uh, basically this question is asking, what does the distribution of the prime numbers roughly look like? Okay, so that this uh, is underlined by an extremely important theorem, which I'm just going to uh, state. The proof is uh, too difficult uh, to do, but I'm gonna state the theorem and you'll be able to, in fact, use the theorem to, to answer sort of basic questions like how many prime numbers are there between 1,000 and 5,000, roughly? How many prime numbers are there between 100,000 and a million, roughly? We can, we'll be able to answer that question with this theorem, which we will not prove. Okay, so now the question is, we, we know this time of how fast we can test a particular integer, and then we're, I'm going to be asking how many n, how many n do you have to test? Okay, okay and, when, and I'm basically thinking here, when I'm thinking how many n do you have to test, I'm thinking here of a specific size. Okay, I, I'm likely to be looking for n values of a certain size. I'm going to say, like, just randomly pick a number between one and 100 digits long. No, I'm going to say I want uh, I want uh, values of n that are 20 digits long. So then that that's going to say the numbers are from n equals this number to n equals that number. And then I will be looking for a specific size, and I'm asking how many do I have to test until I find a prime one. Okay, so the that the answer to that question is. Uh, lying on top of an extremely important theorem. That is the prime number theorem. Okay, it is a theorem, it has been proved. Okay, and that is that the number, that's what this is, this is not the pi that we're normally thinking of. This looks like this capital pi of n. So this is the number of prime numbers less than or equal to n. So let me just write what that is. This is pi of n equals the number of prime numbers less than or equal to n. It's capital N. Okay, so that's the notation we use, capital pi of n. When, 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 we, when we see this, we're thinking, okay, this means how many prime numbers are there less than or equal to n. And the uh, prime number theorem uh, gives us a estimate of that. Doesn't give an exact number, it gives an estimate. And that estimate is that it is approximately n over the natural log of n. This would be, uh, well, a good theorem to spend a little bit of time thinking about, maybe read the Wikipedia article about, get at least the first little bit, and uh, sort of put it into your mind uh, what this graph looks like uh, and what this means, because this is one of those big, sort of big ideas in number theory. Okay, so the number of primes uh, less than or equal uh, to n is n over log n, and it's approximate, and it gets better and better as n gets larger. So it's, in fact, asymptotically equal, which means as the limit, as n goes to infinity, this becomes uh, accurate. Okay, so we have this prime number theorem. So then if I choose, if I choose a uh, a number, I'm going to call it P, I'm looking for a prime number. If I choose a number P uh, randomly, randomly between 1 and n, okay, then the probability that it is prime is 1 over log n. Okay, so there's n numbers between 1 and n, and, uh, and so the, the probability that an individual one of those numbers is 1 over log n. 
Okay, so let us just put this into the RSA uh, uh, context if we if we wanted to. Let us just think we were trying to uh, we get some value n equals p q. That's that's our RSA idea, and we have uh, p and we say if we wanted n to be uh, 1,024 bits long in its base two um, representation, then um, that would imply that uh, p and q, if they're going to be of roughly the same size, which is generally what you want, p and q would be 512 bits uh, long. Okay, so what is the probability that a 502 bit integer is prime? So now I'm thinking I'm going to take a random 512 bit integer and ask what is the probability that it is prime? What's the probability that it's prime if it's 502 bits long? So uh, I, the that probability probability is equal to one over log to the two to the five twelve. Okay, the, the the number has 512 bits. Okay, so the size of the n, n is of the size of n is two to the uh, 512. Okay, so that that if I make that calculation, I get one in 355. That's not too bad, right? I mean, uh, I mean, if I so I only have to pick roughly randomly 355 uh, numbers, test them to see if they're prime or not, which I can do quite quickly, and then I do it 355 times, and I expect to find one that's prime, and then I can I can go ahead and do it again. I mean, I'm not guaranteed right at 355 it will happen. Sometimes it will happen before that, and sometimes it will happen afterwards. But on average. Uh, if I test uh, 355 uh, numbers that I choose randomly, I would expect that uh, I would find one prime. Okay, and in fact, I can do a little bit better than that because there'd be no sense when I randomly pick a number if that number is even to test for it to be prime. So right away, if I just, uh, I run a random number generator, I generate a number with my random number generator. In fact, you can, if you're uh, having nothing to do during this uh, quarantine time, you could be thinking to yourself, hmm, I wonder, in fact, how I even generate a large random number. How does that, how do I, how do I do that? That's also a problem that we haven't uh, discussed. So there is uh, some things there too, but all of your computer software that you've, you've used, like MATLAB or you use Python or whatnot, you, those things all have uh, an ability to generate for you a quote unquote random number. You, you might want to ask yourself how that's happening. But let us just say that we've got these uh, random numbers. We ask our random number generator, please give me a random number this large. We get back a number and it's even. Well, we're not going to waste time testing to see if it's prime because it's obviously divisible by two. So that, uh, that uh, in fact, increases our probability. We only look at the odd ones. We only look at odd numbers. And so that increases our probability uh, that the one that we've selected uh, to be two in 355. So then we're looking at uh, somewhere in the order of 180 uh, numbers and we expect to find one that's prime. So that way we have to run our our prime testing algorithm, our solovay strassen um, algorithm, we'll have to run it 180 times before we get, a, 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 uh, we'll have to run it with 185, 100, roughly 180 different numbers, and then we would expect uh, to get uh, an, 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 a positive uh, result. And um, we, we figured out here that, uh, well, I didn't, we didn't figure it out. We, we, I stated that uh, it's taking log to the base 2 of n to test, so we would expect to have to do that 180 times log to the base 2 of n. Okay, so we get a sense of how long it's going to take to find one of these prime numbers. Okay, so that's the that's the that is the basic idea. Now there's going to be a few things that we need to understand before we can uh, dig into exactly how the algorithm works and in fact prove that it works correctly. Okay, so uh, let me just alert you to some new vocabulary. We have the idea here of a decision problem decision problem. This is a problem with a yes or no answer.
Okay, so I mean, this is a, a, a problem. Is this number a prime or not? Well, let me, in fact, not even say it like that. How about this? Is this number a prime? Then your, your answer is yes or no. That is a decision problem. Okay, then we have a randomized algorithm. Okay, that is any algorithm using random numbers. Okay, uh, and deterministic algorithms uh, do not use uh, random numbers. So let me, I'll just make a note of that. That's not really that uh, um, important to what we're going to do here, but uh, just so we understand the vocabulary, do not use, do not, do not use uh, random numbers. Okay, so then as you're going through a deterministic algorithm, which is likely for those of you who are in computer science as well, uh, most of the algorithms that you've seen, you you give it a certain output a certain input and it plods through the same exact steps in the same order and gives you the same answer every single time that you run that algorithm. Okay, that's a deterministic algorithm. Okay, next uh, next uh, piece of vocabulary here, uh, the, the idea of what we're going to call uh, a YEST-based uh, Monte Carlo algorithm. Okay, uh, so uh, what what uh, what what is this? So we're going to notice here a yes-based uh, Monte Carlo algorithm. So this is it's it's going to be a randomized algorithm. Okay, that's the first thing. And uh, if you get an answer of yes, if you get Okay, so you're asking this yes-no question to your yes-based Monte, uh, Monte Carlo other. So this is a decision problem. It's, it's a decision problem. And you're asking a question. If you get an answer of yes from your algorithm, it runs. You say to, so you, you give, your, you give your, your algorithm a question. Does my dog have spots? And if you get an answer yes, then that's correct. It's always correct. That is correct. Okay. And so as you say to the algorithm, uh, does my dog have spots? And the algorithm answers back, yes, your dog has spots. Then you can be sure that your dog has spots. Okay. <clears throat> if you get a no answer, Uh, the answer might be incorrect. Might. The answer might be incorrect. Okay, so if I say, uh, does my dog have spots? And my decision algorithm says, no, it doesn't. It, it is possible that my, my dog actually still does have spots. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to, if I get the answer yes, I can be certain that uh, uh, everything is fine. If I get the answer no, I, I don't know actually. I don't know if my dog has spots or not. Okay, okay, and the, the, uh, the answer might be uh, incorrect and the algorithm will be given incorrect no with some error probability. So if we get a, a no answer, here we have here the algorithm. gives a uh, incorrect answer no an incorrect and no answer uh, with some probability we're going to have that probability of epsilon okay in, in fact it, some it's not constant uh, i shouldn't say it like this like it's a constant probability, but it's, it's some probability of at most epsilon. Okay, so that's the idea between behind a what is called a Monte Carlo algorithm. Okay, so let me just give you a little bit more uh, 
direction into the, the one that we're going to use for finding pro uh, prime numbers and then I'm going to stop this and then we'll come back with the extra number theory we need before we can understand the algorithm we actually want to see which is the solovey strassen algorithm. Okay, So here we are, we've got these ideas at hand. We've got a problem and the problem is going to be phrased in this way. Uh, uh, the problem is composite. So you will recall of course that the word uh, composite is means not prime. So the algorithm that we're going to see and what we're working towards is this type of, it's a, it's a, it's a ES-based Monte Carlo algorithm for this question. Given, this is what we're given, a positive integer greater than or equal to 2. And we ask the question, is n composite. So this is n, a positive integer, that's n. Uh, and then we ask the question, is n composite? Okay, notice we're not asking the question, is n prime? I know that is what we actually want to know, but I mean, in some sense, if, if we know if it's composite, then we, if it's not composite, then we know it's prime. So it's a sort of the flip side question. So we're asking the question, is n composite? Okay, so the algorithm that we're going to see uh, is the uh, uh, solovey strassen and it is a yes-based Monte Carlo algorithm. Uh, for this question, this question right here, with error probability one half. Yeah, that might seem kind of high uh, to you. Uh, um, you know, <laughs> wants to be wrong half the time, but uh, we're going to see actually how you can repeatedly run the algorithm and then reduce the probability uh, ar to an, an arbitrarily low amount. Okay, but the, the, this problem when the when the solovey strassen algorithm runs once, it gives you an answer yes or no. If it's if it's uh, yes, it's uh, it is for sure composite. If it answers no, it might be composite or it might be prime. Okay, and in order for us to understand how this algorithm works, we need some more number theory. So let me conclude with uh, with our with the some more number theory, because it's uh, certain uh, facts about number theory that underlie how this um, algorithm works. So I'm going to be back in part two uh, of this uh, finding prime numbers. Uh, mission that we are on and I will explain uh, a little bit more uh, number uh, theory at that point. Thank you.